Hello everyone and welcome back to Adam Sharp Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can present models and even pass information to models. So let's get started. The, when we are getting started with models, it's a good idea to get started very, very uh, simple steps. So what we want to do is we want to add a button. When I click a button, I would like to show a model and then eventually we'll see that how we can pass some static text to the model. So the first thing we need is a button. So let's go ahead and create a button. I'm going to go ahead and create a button and one of the overloads of the button takes a string protocol. So I can actually pass in press to open modal. And the second one is action. In other words, second one is the actual button click. Now, the question is how do we open a modal? I can't really say present show something something modal. There's nothing like that. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to use the state to dictate when the modal is open and when the modal is not open. Modal is actually open if you use the presentation modal. So you can uh, use that to open the modal. But we want to also keep track of if the model is open, then if the model is closed, then we open it. If the model is open, we close it. So we need some sort of a state. So let's go ahead and create a state. And in this case, I'm just going to say is model open, which will be a Boolean property, and it will be false, because initially the model is not open. When the person clicks the button, I can simply go ahead and say is open, is model open equals to true. Now, since this particular property is model open is actually a state property, anytime I'm going to change the value, the body gets rendered again. Now it's my time to add the code for model. And you can present a model using the presentation function. And you can pass in the model to open the model. But our model is actually based on whether we click the button or not. So we have to check this is modal open property. So if is modal open, then go ahead, show a modal. And inside the modal, you can actually pass in a view that you want to display. So I'm just going to say modal or modal view. Else, simply go ahead and return nil. Now, this is fine. Let's go ahead and build that. Once it is built, we'll have to actually click on the live view so that we can run the application in live mode. And once it is in live mode, you can actually see the application. By the way, if you do want to debug in live mode, you can right click on this and you can click on the debug preview, which is going to run the live mode, but it will also give you the debugging console so you can debug your application, step through your application if needed. So let's go ahead and wait for the live view, live view to get uh, refreshed. And when it is, we're gonna come back to it. Okay, so here we go, our live view is working. Now I can go ahead and click on the press to open a modal. And you can see it actually opens a modal. And if you can see a little bit behind the other window, so it's very visual that the modal gets open and the other one, the parent window, is actually sent back. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed, let me actually go ahead and run it again. And we're going to go into live view, live view, and you can see that the modal is open, that's fine. But if I go ahead and start clicking on the modal again, so one time is open, but if I do it again, it's not going to work. So it only works once. And the reason it only works once is that we didn't really toggle the is modal property. It's always on. So what we can do is when the modal is actually dismissed, we can go ahead and make sure to toggle this property. So I can go over here and I can say self.isModal open dot toggle. Now one thing to note over here is that if you actually use modal over here, just for reference, and you open this up, you can see the first one is a content view, and the second or the last argument is a on dismiss. So that's what we have done. We have implemented the on dismiss, which is this part. So which is basically saying that go ahead and toggle the modal. If it's on, turn it off. If it's off, turn it on. Now let's go ahead with that change, go ahead and run this again. And once it is in live view, we should be able to open the modal again and again. Great, so this is working fine. 
What about if I actually wanted to pass in something to the modal? So if I wanted to pass some text over here. So in order to pass a value, first I need to create some sort of a variable, let name equals to John Doe or whatever. So here we go. And now I can actually pass in the name. So it's not that hard. You can see that we can simply pass in the name and now this name will be passed on to the text and that is gonna make, uh, you know, it's gonna solve our problem. So let's go ahead and run this, resume it, go ahead and play it. So now when we are able to click on press to open a modal, you will see that we're gonna pass the name, which is John Doe. Great. So you can see that it's not that hard to create modals. You do have to think about state and how the state can contribute to whether the modal has to be opened or closed. So it's a little bit different, obviously, from your old UI kit programming that you are used to, where you simply call uh, the self or present view controller and it just present view controller in the modal. Um, so it's a little bit different from that point of view, definitely. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then, then the best way would be check out my course on Swift UI declarative interfaces for any Apple platform. This is hosted on Udemy. I keep on adding more and more content to the course. Currently the course runs about six hours long and I will be adding more content to the course as I learn new things about Swift UI. You can check out different contents in the table of contents, which is building list and navigation, grid layout, state binding, even the MVVM design pattern. MVVM design pattern is the kind of like the go-to framework or the design pattern, not the framework, but the design pattern, which is can be used with Swift UI. I mean, although you can use any design pattern you want, but Swift UI is designed in a way that MVVM design pattern is the most suitable design pattern to use when you're building applications. Apart from that, you also learned about gestures, property wrappers, forms, and so on. Now, if you want to get this course on the best price, which is $9.99, $9.99, then simply check out the YouTube description and there's a link to the course inside the YouTube description. So click on the link, it's gonna apply the coupon, you're gonna get the best price. And to be really honest, if you use my coupon, I get to keep 90% of the profit. So if it's $9, I get to keep 90% of that. If you use some other coupon, then I get to keep only 10%. So please use the coupons that are in the description. And thank you so much for your continuous support and uh, stay tuned for more videos.